Alright, let's take a look at this uh, test review for stats again. So, describe the correlation. Remember, we have strong, weak, um, positive, and negative. Okay? So, negative, going down to the right, that would be negative. Closer together, would be strong. So, strong, negative. Okay? Two, that again, down to the right. So, it's negative, close together, almost a straight line. So, definitely strong. Okay? Number three, um, it's positive up and to the right, close together, so strong, positive. Okay, five again, that's even stronger, but still a strong positive. Whereas number six, positive, but see how it's more spread out? So that would be weak positive. And four would be no correlation. Okay, so they're not close enough together. Now, for correlational coefficients of these graphs, Okay, the um, way it goes is for positive, it goes from 0 to 1, okay? So these positive ones, we have like 10 and 11, okay? Really close together, it's going to be close to 1, so that's probably like 0.95, okay? Um, for 10, it's less, so maybe like 0.70 for number 10, okay? If there's no correlation like number 9, it'd be close to zero, or we could just write zero for it. Okay, now if it's negative, it goes from negative one to zero. Okay, zero being no correlation, just like with positive, closer to negative one, the stronger it is. So looking at seven, eight, and 12, 12 looks to be the weakest, eight stronger, nine the strongest. So a strong one, that one looks pretty similar to 11, so it'd be negative point, maybe 91. Okay, number eight is a little bit weaker, so maybe negative point sixty-eight, and twelve fairly weak, so maybe negative point forty, because it's still fairly strong. So um, the way to look is kind of the difference between strong and weak would be point five or negative point five. Okay, if it's closer to zero than point five, it's going to be weak. If it's closer than one, it's going to be strong. All right, now, um, the, line, the relationship, linear, quadratic, or exponential. Exponential should look like that. Linear, like that or that. Quadratic would look like this, okay? So none of these are quadratic, and we can see definitely linear, definitely linear, definitely exponential, and again, exponential, okay? Now, to construct a scatter plot, pretty easy, right? We just plot the points. So point 0.23 would be right here. Point 0.24 right here. Point 0.24 again right there. Point 0.34 right here. Um, point 0.56. And point 0.910. Would look like that. Okay, 18. 3 and 0.6 would be really close here to 0. 28 and 11, not very high. 58 up to 400, a little higher. 83 up to 7,000. Now we're starting to see some movement. 89 up to 16,000. And 98 up to 46 would look like that. You can see the difference, definitely a linear, definitely an exponential in this, the line of best fit that you would want. Okay, so number 9, we have 10 at 800, 60 at 500, 70 at 400, 80 at 300, 80 at 400, and 100 at 200. Again, definitely that linear shape to it. Um, for 20, we have 20 at 104, so about right there. Then 190 at 11, so a little above. 290 at 27, so about a third. 480 at 246, and then we can 720. 930, okay, and again, you've got that exponential pattern there. All right, so it says um, 
The table on scatter plot below shows the money left according to the days of vacation. Draw a line of best fit and write the equation for the line. Okay? So, two ways you could do this. You could do it by hand or using the calculator. Okay? So, if we did the calculator, you would need to open a list and spreadsheet, enter that in, um, see the plot, then use the menu, and I'll show you some screenshots of what that would look like. Then you use the menu to create that line of best fit. If you're doing it by hand, I would just kind of estimate. Maybe I'd start at 1,200, draw my graph, and my equation would be y equals my slope, which looks like I'm going down. I pick two points to estimate. I'm going down 150 and to the right 2. So negative 150 over 2 would be negative 75x plus my y-intercept, 1,200, okay? But if I use my calculator, I'm going to enter all that information in. Um, so I do a list and spreadsheet and do all this stuff. So we can see I put in the data for days for money in tab 1. Then I went to data and statistics from my list and spreadsheet, found the actual line of best fit, which mine was pretty close, but we can see I was off on my y-intercept a little bit and my slope. And that's what it would look like. Now, 22 says the scatter plot below shows the annual cost of raising werewolves since 1980. Okay, so zero would be like 1980. Okay, so we need to move out the scatter plot. It says draw a line of best fit, write the equation. So again, I could try to do it by hand, and that's a pretty good scatter plot. But let me put the data into the calculator and see what I get. So I do year and cost in my list and spreadsheet, put in that information, making sure to keep it together, and then I, once I've got it in the list and spreadsheet, I go to my data and statistics, put in my year for the X, the cost for the Y, um, do a line of best fit. And I end up with this. Okay, so my line of best fit was pretty close, but there's my equation. So y equals 42 point, we'll just say 46x plus 178.71. Okay, then um, we want to predict, well, what would the cost be in 2009? So if we're continuing to predict. So again, okay, 1980 was 0, 1985 was 5, 30 was 2010. So I'd actually want to go to 29 right in here. So that's my x, so I can plug it in and go 42 plus 46 times 29 plus 178.71 and see um, what cost that's going to give me. And I can just use the calculator. Um, to calculate that out for me. So 42.46 times 29 plus 178.71 and that gives me $1,410.05 would be the cost roughly in 2009. I could also do it backward and say well I want to know what year it's going to be $2,000. So then I'd put 2000 in here and then I would solve So first I'd subtract by 178.71. See what that gives me. So I go 2000 minus 178.71, which gives me 1821.29. Then I divide by 42.46. And that would give me what year from 1980 that would be. So then I divide by 42.46, and I would get 42.89, so pretty close to 43, okay, which from 1980, right, 43, um, if we went 1980 plus 43, that would give us 
our answer. So 2022 is when that would roughly cost $2,000. Okay? So, and then we could go and find the correlational coefficient if we wanted to as well, but we don't need to worry about that here. Okay? So, then, I think this is our last question. So is this a, line, a good line of best fit? Why or why not? So we could plot a residual, which would basically be taking all these points and finding their distances and then plotting them kind of that way. And what we look for is kind of if it's going back and forth, if it's kind of random, not really a pattern to it. Which if I'm looking at this, it looks like it cuts it in its space pretty good. So I would say yes, it's a line of good line of best fit. Because we've got that random pattern kind of on both sides the whole time. Um, and so there we go, guys. We are done.